We've all seen these horn strobes at one point. The Simplex True Alert series or the 4906 series of devices. Let's say you're swapping out an addressable Simplex panel with something else, like let's say a Firelight, Gamewell, or Notifier, but the customer wants to keep the old horn strobes. Or you're a young and dumb enthusiast that just wants to play around with these devices. Well, there's a couple ways you can do this. There's two ways to get these horn strobes to properly synchronize with each other because these horn strobes have to have a sync input in order to sound at all. One way is with a Simplex 4905-9938 SmartSync module, but today we're going to be focusing on the other method, which is using a Simplex 4009 IDNet NAC extender, which you would normally find on a larger system. And chances are, if you're working on a larger system, you probably already have these installed. Now let's say you're going from an addressable simplex panel to another type of panel, such as a firelight, but you want to get these horn strobes to work properly. Now, what you're going to want to do is not only you're going to have to change some settings in the power supply itself, but you're also going to have to change the way that it's wired, which may be a little confusing at first, but once you got it, it's super easy. For this video, I will be using the Firelight MS9600, but the same will apply to any other fire alarm panel, so pay attention within the next few minutes and I'll show you exactly how to get it done. Alright, so you want your new fire alarm panel to properly trigger the power supply. Now what you're going to want to do is, if you're going from an addressable simplex panel, you're going to want to change the configuration and wiring on the power supply itself to be conventional, which seemed confusing at first but it's pretty easy once you've gotten the hang of it all right so first off we're going to start off with the wiring now the 4009 has a diagram on the door itself that shows you where everything is now if you're coming off of an old addressable simplex panel it was probably using the idnet inputs but if you're using a new panel you're going to want to use the hardwired inputs on the bottom left now the diagram doesn't really show you how to wire the hardwired inputs or trigger inputs, so I'm just going to go ahead and show you how I have it wired. Alright, so this is how I have it wired, and it looks pretty simple, but this is something that you really need to pay attention to. So, channel 1 is your strobe input, and channel 2 is your horn input. Now, in order to, so basically how I have this set up is I do have this set up for audible silence, which basically means that whenever you silence through the panel, the horns cut off, but the strobes continue flashing, which I know that that is no longer allowed nationally. However, some states actually still require you to have this feature. As you can see for audible silence, I have two sets of wire going to the power supply triggers. Of course, I have them programmed on the panel for different things, which I will discuss in the next part. But if you didn't want to use audible silence, all you would do is simply jumper channel one to channel two. That's all you would have to do. Now let's not forget our end of line resistors for NAC supervision. So as you can see for audible silence, I have two resistors, um, one for channel one, the other for channel two. Now, if you weren't using audible silence, you would simply only use one, and you would have that wired to um, terminals 6 and 8. And terminals 6 and 8 are the outs for channel 2, while for channel 1, terminals 2 and 4 are the outs. Now, make sure that if you're not using audible silence, that you use the outs from terminals 2 and 4 to the ins on channel 2. POS stands for our positives, RET stands for our negatives. Um, as you can see, that's how I have um, the power supply wired through the ends. So in case you guys didn't know what those st stood for, that's what they stand for. So that's pretty much all I have to explain on the wiring part on the power supply itself. Now I'm going to show you how I have it wired on the actual fire alarm panel. So this is how I have it wired on my Firelight MS9600. Now, I am using a Firelight panel, however, the same applies to any other control panel. Now, what I have on my MS9600 is I'm using NAC1 for the horns, and I'm using NAC3 for the strobes. And I have NAC3 set for non-silenceable, and NAC3 is going to channel 1, the strobe input on the power supply, and NAC1 is going to channel 2 on the power supply. So. Pretty much the horns are set for non-silenceable, and NAC3 is my non-silenceable circuit. So pretty you know, simple setup. Now if this was not using audible silence, 
I would only use one circuit, and of course I would do the same at the power supply that I explained earlier. Alright, so now we're on to the programming part on the fire alarm panel, which I already kind of explained, but I'm going to go ahead and explain it again, just a little bit more in detail. So as you can see, NAC1 I have programmed as type bell, silenceable yes, because this is our horn, which is, you know, pretty much simple, and of course if you were not using audible silence, you would only have it set up simply like this. But since we're using audible silence, we're going to move on to our other NAC, which on this 9600, um, I have set up on NAC 3, which on NAC 3, I have it set to NAC type strobe, silenceable no. Now this is what it would pretty much look like on a firelight panel. Now on whatever brand panel you were using, you would essentially do it the same way, just whatever way you would on that panel. Um, this is basically just to give you a general idea of what you would need to do. Of course, these two NAC circuits are going to tell the 4009 to go into alarm and sound the horns and strobes, but basically, NAC1 is telling the 4009 to silence the horns only when you silence through the panel, but keep the strobes going on NAC3 until you reset the panel. So basically, you have one NAC set as silenceable for your horns, and the other NAC set as non-silenceable to keep the strobes going until you reset your panel. Okay, so now we're on a configuration settings on the power supply itself. And again, there is a diagram on the door of the can that shows you the switch position, switch functions for your desired operation. Now, what we're going to want to focus on is switches um, one and two. Now, switch position one, the only thing you're really going to want to do there is make sure switch position eight is in the on position because what you're doing is telling the power supply to look for a conventional NAC instead of an SLC loop if this was on an addressable simplex panel. But we're not using an addressable simplex panel, we're using a firelight panel, so we're going to want switch position 8 to be on so it'll look for our conventional NAC. Switch position 6 is for if we want to use wheel lock devices. We're going to leave that off since we're using true alerts, but if we wanted to use wheel lock devices, we could have switch position 6 on because this power supply is capable of doing sync wheel lock. But we're not using wheel lock devices, we're using simplex true alerts, so we're going to leave that off. All right, for switch number two, positions one through three, control mapping, which we're not really going to worry too much about control mapping. So we're just going to kind of leave that alone for today. But what we really want to focus on is switch positions four and eight. Now, switch position four, we want that in the on position because basically what you're doing is telling the 4009 to insert the sync protocol into the output NAC. So basically NACs one through four on the power supply are basically going to insert the sync protocol on your horn strobes. Now, switch position 8 is basically telling the power supply that this is a true alert NAC or quick alert NAC. So, I have that switched on. Now, off would be a conventional NAC, which I believe is for, like, following, basically, sync protocols that are generated from the panel itself onto the NAC circuit. Um, or if you're using mechanical horns and you want to keep those on continuous. So, basically, just make sure you have switch position 8 on. So it'll basically get sync protocol from the power supply itself. Now, once you've configured all the dip switches correctly, it should look like this. As you can see, switch one, position eight should be on, which basically tells the 4009 that this is a conventional NAC being triggered. And switch number two, 
I have positions 4 and 8 on, which basically inserts the sync protocol generated from the power supply onto the horn strobe, which is pretty much all you need to do. Aside from making sure all your horn strobes are wired correctly, the outputs on the power supply are wired correctly, so pretty much once that's all out of the way, the only thing that's now left to do is simply test the power supply and make sure everything works. Now that's pretty much it. That's how you conventionally wire and configure a Simplex 4009 IDNet NAC extender to a conventional NAC. Now, one thing that I will mention that if you hook up a 4009 to a control panel that runs FWR, you may have some problems with it. Because one thing that I did try, because the first panel I did try was an MS9200 UDLS, which puts out FWR or full wave rectified power. And it was giving some rather unusual behavior. So um, I will recommend that if you're going to do this, make sure the um, NACs are getting filtered DC. I would not recommend using panels like the 9200, um, MS5 UD, MS2, and MS4, or any kind of panel that puts out FWR power because you will have some unusual behavior. Um, with it and it doesn't really have anything to do with the configuration and wiring on the panel it's just really the um, NAC power which I didn't think that would be a problem but apparently it was so just something to keep in mind and that's really all I have if you have any questions be sure to leave them in the comments and I'll be sure to get them done